Hey, it's Tom for JAK, and I'm sat with Jamie, who is our in-house guitar tech at JAK, and we're gonna be running you through ways to set up your guitar. So we're gonna be looking at intonation, we're gonna be looking at your neck relief, and... Uh, string height. String height. As well. And pickup and, height. Uh, pickup height also, and we're also gonna look at uh, different ways string gauges can affect the guitar, and uh, things that you might need to do in order to accommodate a bigger set of strings or a smaller sure. set of strings. So, um, starting with this, we've got a player strap, uh, straight out of the box. I mean, they're they're pretty pretty well set up yeah, as yeah. it is anyway. But um, what we're going to go through is the setup on there. But the most important thing, these guitars come up set up pretty well um, straight from the factory. But when they move across seas and they move other places. Uh, the truss rod may move, you know, these things are getting hot and cold in con you know, container ships and things like that during their transportation to get to here in the end. Yeah. Um, in theory, the only thing you should need to do when you get a new guitar is maybe do a truss rod adjustment, but we'll always do that for you beforehand anyway. Um, but a lot of people are very scared of making this adjustment and it's just to get the information out there that you don't need to be scared of making a truss rod adjustment unless you're going to you know, put a truss rod key in there and start cranking it and cranking it and cranking it yeah. to the point where it snaps, you're, you're not going to break it. So the way that we're going to do this, everything else in the setup follows on from the truss rod adjustment. So once your strings are on there, I mean, these are stock 9 to 42s. Um, you want to make your truss rod adjustment and then everything else follows on in the setup after that. So I think it's also important to mention that if you're changing string gauge on your guitars, like it, maybe you're not comfortable with the 9 to, to 42s, you want to move up to like 10 to 46 or yep. something, um, or even some of the thicker gauges, like you're going to need to make adjustments to your guitar to make it play as well as it could. Yeah, so if you're going to, I mean, these come stock with 9s, a lot of guys that we have coming to the shop, they want 10s on there straight away, and, yep. and we can do that. Um, but there is a few adjustments that are going to have to have to make, you're going to have to do to the guitar. So if you're going from 9s to 10s, you're putting on let's say another 10 pounds of pressure on the guitar neck. Sure. So you're going to find that you're going to have more relief in there. So it's going to start feeling spongy around here. And in doing that, your action's going to come up and your intonation's going to be slightly off. So if you want to do this, we'll always send them out with the manufactured gauge unless you, you know, let us know that you want it changed and we can do that for you. But um, this is so you can do it yourself. So you, you can make the adjustments necessary to go up to say, 11 to 49 gauge strings. These guitars should be able to take up to that. You will have to, set them up, yeah. uh, but they should be able to take that. If you want to start going up to 12s and 13s, uh, then you're going to have to come and go, go and see a, see a technician because it involves recutting the nut slots um, and a few other bits and pieces to actually accommodate, accommodate those strings to the guitar. Yeah. Um, so let's start with the truss rod adjustment. Sure, yeah. So first thing, so what you want to do is just check your guitar, make sure it's in tune. You can see on the tuner there, we're just it doesn't have to be dead on, but it does, it does help. You want to get it as perfect or as close as you can to make the adjustment. So there we go, that's near enough in tune. Now, I'll try and explain this and hopefully you can, you can understand it clearly enough. What, we, what we're doing is we're checking the, the gap between the seventh fret and the bottom of the string whilst using the string as a straight edge so we know how much curve we've got in there. So what we're really looking for is about half a millimetre, if we're putting it in metric. It's stated the actual factory setup for these is 12 thousandths of an inch. So we would normally do this with a set of feeler gauges. If you haven't got those on you, then use half a millimetre as an example. So to check this, we're going to the, the frets are dead level. With each, should be dead level with each other from the top. So we're going to use the frets as the baseline and then we're going to check under here. So the truss rod is really only active up until about here. It doesn't really do anything past there. It's only really affecting this area. So as we use the string as a straight edge, you can use the high E or use the low E if you're working on this side. Just for the camera's sake, we'll do it on the high E here. I don't know if you can see from that one. Um, what we're going to do is push it down on the first fret. If you're struggling with that, put a capo on there. It'll do the same thing. And then we're going to use this hand on the, say, the, where the, where the, where the, guitar, uh, the neck sort of rolls off of the body, so we're going to go from the 17th fret here, or we use the last fret, it doesn't really matter, anywhere between here. And then what you want to do is check the gap between the top of the 7th fret and the bottom of the string. 
and there you want to you want to eyeball it slightly like i say if you want to really get really into it you can use a set of feeler gauges holding the capo on there of about half a millimeter is where you want to be so i mean with this i don't know if you can pick that up on the camera it's not dead flat if it's too straight it'll be flat it won't it won't be any good so with that it's a little bit close as you're looking down the truss rod so when you adjust the truss rod if you slacken it off the neck is going to move that way. So slacking off is putting the key in there, so whichever the side of the guitar the adjuster is, put the key in and then turn it anti-clockwise. You don't need to turn it by much. Quarter of a turn at the very most. I mean with this, you can see I'm probably going to go uh, an eighth of a turn. So I'm just going to turn it to there and then just recheck that um, after I've tuned it up. So I'm going to tune the guitar again just to get the tension about the same on the neck. Okay, so we've, we've retuned the guitar, just going to check there, and that gap is near enough dead on, about half a mil. So I'm, I'm happy with that. If you, if you find that you've got more than that and you've got a millimetre gap between here, tighten it. So go an eighth of a turn, just a little bit, it doesn't have to be much. Put the key in there, turn it that way slightly and you'll find that that fret will get closer to the string. You know, so you're flat, flattening it out so the string will be closer as you're measuring it from those two points. So. I'm happy with where that is, and we're going to sure. set the rest of the guitar up around that now that okay. we're happy with that. So there's two things to do. Action is a uh, debatable topic. It depends on what type of player you are, and I'm going to get into string gauges now as well. If, you, if you're more of a shreddy type player, generally you're going to want a slightly lower action on there. Uh, and you might want lighter strings as well. So sure. you know, if you want to go crazy light, you can get the seven gauge. Um, I don't know if you've used them, but they are. I've not used them. It's, no. it's like roller skating on an ice rink. I haven't tried that yet. Yeah, but that's how, that's how fast it is. You're going to overbend to start off with, but Billy Gibbons uses them that way, and he's happy. They're that good way, enough for Billy. Um, like I said, we're going to stick with the nines on here. A general action height. So this is a string action gauge. You can see it. This is really handy for giving you measurements of what you're checking is underneath the last fret here. You're really looking for how high away the string is, and you're looking at the marker here. If you can see, I know you can see sure. there. I don't know if we can pick this up on camera that well, but we're in millimeters on this side and then inches on, on this okay. side, and it's really handy. So if we roll it underneath here, what we're looking for, the way I will set a guitar action, so someone wants a medium action, mm -hmm. and factory standard for one of these as well is um, four sixty-fourths from the last fret. Sure, okay. So if you're looking at this, you're going one, two, three, four. In If you want to do it in, in millimeters, it's just under two mil. Mm. So if we do it in mil on this side, you can see that that's slightly over there. Yep. So what I'm going to do is drop that down using an Allen key here. You usually get a supply of guitar, but these tools are uh, invaluable. You can, regardless what guitar you have. And you're doing this for each individual saddle each as well, Each individual right? yeah. saddle. Yeah, so you can see that that's at that's at two mil, mm -hmm. and you work your way yeah you do right this away across and, yeah and you adjust them all. But luckily this one is is pretty well set. You just adjust these to adjust us here on the bridge. Now every guitar is different. If you've got a Les Paul, it's even easier. You've just got either side. Yeah, and you just yeah, it's it. on that bar, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, so you only really need to do this string and this string, and the others will be fine. Okay. So once we're happy with that. Um, we then need to intonate the guitar. Sure. Um, it, what intonation is, if you're not too sure, it's, it's, it's about getting the 12th fret here to be exactly the same pitch, but an octave, uh, exactly the same note, for it, but an octave higher from where it is at the nut. So if we've got an E here, we want that to be dead on E here as well as we, mm. push, as yeah. we push the fret down. So, so what happens there is like if the string length what we're, what we're adjusting there is the string length. What we're adjusting because is the string length to that affects get the scale where halfway length point height. is like here, yeah. right? Yeah, cool. So if we if we tune the guitar in, we just set it to standard and we'll show you how to do this as well. I don't know if you can see on the tuner. So we get this completely in tune. So what we'll do is the low E, we'll just check the intonation on that. So we oh, so hit going into this, yeah. yeah. What you want to do if you don't know if you're not sure what a harmonic is or how to hit it or anything like that, we'll go through that with you, you know, you know but yeah. it's, it's just going through for the thrubbers out there that don't know. The harmonic is basically the halfway point on here, but as you, when you play it, you want to rest your finger 
on the string above the 12th fret, pick the string, and then let go. You don't want any, hardly any pressure on there, you just want to get that, you don't want to hear this, you don't want to hear this, you want to hear this. So that harmonic, as you can see on the tuner, it should be near enough. I always find it generally helps to do this on the neck pickup with everything turned up on the guitar as well to full. So we can see that that's near enough lining up central. Mm -hmm. That harmonic is, that's in tune. Now what we want to do after we've got that, we want to check what it is as we push down on the 12th fret. So you don't want to put too much pressure on there, you don't want to bend the string, you just want to push it down to the point where it's just touching the fret. You check that again and luckily that is intonated, which is fine. And it always benefits doing this, it really does help, every, you know, not just when you change string gauge, um, it helps to do it when every time you restring your guitar, yeah. because that intonation can move ever so slightly. Sure. It, it, you know. I found that um, when I've done like overseas contracts and stuff like that, yeah. then with the with the weather changes, like I've done cruise ship contracts and things 100%. like that, like played in the Alps, and like the, the difference that makes on your guitar is huge. Yeah, it so can like, be anything. You know, it's uh, uh, the truss rod as well. It can really, you know, if you're flying, you're going into hot and cold and exactly. things like and, that. And what happens is like your, your body, the body of your guitar shrinks slightly, and then oh, it's, you know, like yeah, lots of things. Your happen. saddle's now in a different place to where the nut was ever so slightly, and that will affect the intonation, right? Yeah, I, I, all these things need to be adjusted. Yeah. Um, but if you can get into the routine of doing this. It's, it's worth learning. Yeah. It really is worth, you know, basic set, we don't, you know, it's not worth, you know, refretting and things like that. It's, it's pretty complicated stuff. But this, you know, it's going to go a long way, especially if you've got a big recording session or something like that. You want to go yeah, in there and lay a track you down. Yeah. You know, you're playing something down here and then you're doing that take and you pl play something here and it's like, oh no, my guitar's out of tune. But it's, sure. it's just because it needed intonating. So I'm just going to check these ones here as well. So the rule with this is going through on how to do the intonation. So if we check that G there. Mm -hmm. It's matching up on the harmonic fine. If I push it down on the fret, it's actually showing a slightly sharp on here. So what we're gonna wanna do is, if this note comes up sharp, this way on the tuner, you wanna lengthen the, the, the saddle. So yeah. by doing that, we're gonna turn clockwise on here, just a couple of turns to bring it back, and then we're going to have to retune the string again. Mm -hmm. Check the note again. See, that's it. That's in now. Yeah. And the same as the other way. If it, if you if you if you intonating the guitar and you and it shows up flat. Hopefully, we've got a flat string on here, but I don't know if we will. No, we haven't got one on here, but if I, if I make one flat on purpose. If it shows up flat on the tuner here on that 12th fretted note after you've tuned it, back off counterclockwise and you'll bring this saddle that way. Sure, yeah, you're making the string short. Yeah, because yeah. you're trying to, trying to get it to match up on here. Once they're all done, just go through them, do them two or three times. Once they're done, that's stable. It's through there and you won't Perfect. have to do it again until if you change one string at a time, which we've gone, I think we've gone through in yeah, a yeah. previous video, you're not going to knock this out of whack or anything like that. But if you are flying and doing that, then just it's worth making a habit of doing it. So it's you've yeah. always got that tune. I, th I think one of the really important things to mention with intonation as well, and the reason that you would do it is that the biggest giveaway of when your intonation is out is if you can play a chord, um, like an A chord here on like fifth fret, yeah. and then you play like the same chord an octave up, it sounds slightly out of tune when you yeah. play it with the original chord. So if you're, in particular, if you're doing recording and things yeah. like that, you can definitely hear the difference in that. So you definitely need to check that if you are doing recording at home. Yeah, 100%. So uh, last thing I'm gonna get to, so that's basically how to set up your guitar, just in a, in a brief summary, quite quick, you know, yeah. truss rod first, string height, set that second, and then finish off with your intonation. Uh, depending on what strings you use, you can change them and, and then do that process again and it will, will accommodate those. Um, last thing I'm gonna get to on, particularly with a Strat, and, uh, is, is the pickup height. Now, Fender's recommendation is one eighth of an inch on the bass side and three sixty-fourths on the treble side. 
Okay. Depending on which guitar, check the manual. It's always in there. Depending on what, you know, it might be a noiseless pickup, you might have a humbucker, you might have that. All of that information is in the manual when you buy the guitar. Yeah. Um, but it's worth checking that so you've got a nice even balance. Now, where I'll generally start is with that measurement and then tweak. Yeah tweak to taste from there, you know, you might want more low end, you might want to back them off and uh, get a bit more dynamic out of the guitar, uh, or you might want to raise them slightly higher and, um, and make it, you know, get as much output out of the pickup sure. as you can. So, so when you raise the pickup and lower the pickup, what yeah. is the, the immediate effect of that? Um, as you're raising it, the output of the string is higher because it's, it's therefore it's closer, closer to the, the pole market. piece, yeah. yeah, you can feel it on there, and you, it's say if you go for an amp, you, it will sound hotter. Sure. Um, whereas if you back it off, you get that kind of airy thing going on where it's really dynamic, you know, you hit yeah. it hard, you, it's all down to personal taste. But my recommendation is start with the factory settings mm -hmm. and then adjust the taste after that. You know, I, I, on my own, I've always left them as factory, but there's, there's a lot of guys out there who, who uh, it's dependent on the pickup. Sure. I know a lot of people sync their middle pickup, particularly on strats and, and like Ivanezes and things like yeah, that. Yeah, they can do. So yeah. I think that stems from like a Richie Blackmore thing, I think, mm. is dropping it right down so you can't feel it and it's out the way. Sure. Um, but I like to use my middle pickup. Yeah, same. So I, yeah, I'll let it, I'll leave it, leave it where it is. So to set the pickup height on here, the way that they're generally done, TV Jones pickups are slightly different. You always measure from sort of the body of the pickup to the bottom of the string without pressing anything down. Okay. But on most guitars, the measurement is done. So if, you, if, we, if we take this, this gauge here, if you see that side, I don't know if you can see that on camera there, this side here is giving me uh, my measure increments of inches there. Mm -hmm. So if I drop it down here, when you measure a pickup height, specifically on one of these guitars, you want to measure it from the top of the pole piece to the bottom of the string. Sometimes it's a bit fiddly, you do have to kind of get in there and crouch down and things like that, but yeah. you'll get it. So if we if we start here, I, I mean, I'm showing you, but it's... Uh, That's fine. I yeah. Mean, you, can, you can use your imagination. Yeah, yeah. As we're dropping down, you can see that increment. That is, I mean, it's in spec. That's, you can see six there, six, yeah. six markings. And then on this side, that's on one end. And it's, it's important to mention when you're doing this that you're pushing the string down on the... Always pushing fret. the string down on the last fret. Yeah. Because that's going to give you your accurate reading from there. Some guys like doing it at the 12th fret, but just for, just for demo sake, for the way that I do it, there isn't a right or wrong way of doing it. But my personal way is to hold it down on the last fret and then just check, check the measurement under there and then adjust to taste. Perfect. Cool. So that's basically the setup of a... Yeah, that's the yeah. setup of a, of a strap for you. Wicked. So there's obviously numerous ways that you can set up a guitar. Um, different guitars are going to have different things that you have to think about. So for instance, if it's got a Floyd Rose, <laughs> okay. then yeah, that's going to be yeah. a completely different thing. But these principles still apply to Floyd Roses. Um, there's just a, a, yeah, an extra I, bit of faff that you have to there, go through. There's a bit more to it. I mean, with a Floyd Rose, it's um, if, you, if you're going to play that style of guitar, don't be hesitant, but it just means that you're going to have to learn how to set the thing up. Yeah. Um, generally they'll come with a nut that locks down here and the strings don't go through and pull over a saddle, they'll sit inside a slot that you actually have to tighten, you know, you have to cut the ball end off, put it in and tighten yeah. it up with an Allen key. But the same principles apply to that. Yep. You know, the truss rod adjustment is still the same. The string height, it might not be done on individual saddles, you might have a, um, a screw either side of the bridge yep. or an Allen, an Allen bolt that you have to change to raise it or lower it. And the intonation, always refer to the manual, it will tell you how to do it, but the same basic principles yeah. apply. Um, yeah, so, so all of these things apply to... Yeah, the, o the only difference that you'll, that you'll make to it is if you're, if you're, if you're changing the height of the string, mm -hmm. so it's down to action, you know. I hear a lot of the time, um, I want low action with no buzzing, um, which is, it can't happen, I'm afraid. It's, it, we're trying to defy the laws of physics by doing it that way. What will happen, if you have a, a, law, uh, a, a low action, that string is closer to the frets. So if you're going to play really light, you know, if you've got a light touch on the fingerboard, you're doing you know, some kind of shreddy type stuff that's really, really light playing with the fingers, it's going to work great. Mm. But if you're going to want to play some, you know, some big funky chords and smack the living daylights out of the yeah. strings, it's going to buzz like no tomorrow because they're closer. So if you look here, as that string's closer, here, if, we, if we just simulate the height of the string on this side and we're playing a note there, you'll see that it actually ends up getting closer to the fret because it's closer there. Mm. So I would always recommend a medium action if you're playing 
uh, various types of music. When a, a medium to low action would be about four sixty fourths. Okay. Um, a really low action, super low action, I would say, is about three sixty fourths on the treble side, moving up to four sixty fourths of an inch here on on the bass side. Sure. Uh, and then a the medium action is what medium to high action is what I'll use on my own guitars. I will go five sixty fourths on the treble side and then uh, tapering up to about six on the bass side. So there's actually a slight taper there yeah. come up. But um, it, it's worth experimenting. Uh, you can't, just make sure you use the right size Allen keys and everything else yeah. and you won't hurt it. I think the only thing to, to really drive home is don't over tighten the truss rod. Or like don't go crazy with the turns on it. It's like yeah, very don't, small. Yeah, yeah, don't go crazy with it. But I mean, I mean, you've got to really to break it. You've got to be really going for yeah, it. Sure. I mean, it's uh, you, you know, kind of yanking on it and turning it. It'll go. The same with some of these saddles here. Now these, the tension, the the pressure on that is probably about twenty pounds of pressure once it's tuned up. Sure. If you're going to lower these saddles down to get them to a height that you want, I would take a bit of tension out of the string so that the threads on the side of these saddles aren't under a load of tension. Okay, yeah. Um, if I'm raising it, I would drop it right down, do it, tune back up, and then check. You just don't want to put any unnecessary force on parts that you don't have to. Sure. Um, but if you're unsure, uh, come and see us and you know, we'd be happy, happy to sort you out with a setup yeah. or anything like that. Yeah. Wicked. So the other thing we need to mention is going to be yeah. if you have a trem. So this one's got a two-point trem on it. Um, okay and obviously a lot of fenders have them and a lot of people at home have got uh, strats and things like that. So yeah, different different trim systems, whether it's a two-point trim or a six-point trim or Floyd Rose type trim, you know, they're all going to do this. Now, the key thing and worth mentioning is when you change your string gauge, so this has got nines on it, we've gone through how to set this up and mm -hmm. this can apply to any guitar, whether it's a Tele or it's a Les Paul, any, any, any hardtail guitar, that's, that was how I would set one up. Yep. Now, this trim on this guitar it's actually floating. So you'll see that it's actually on a pivot here and it moves up and down. So this is set how it is with nines on there. Personally, the way that I, I, I set my own up is uh, if I'm playing the low E string, if we look on the tuner here, we should, should see it. I'll just hold it up to the thing. Um, if I'm playing the low E, I want it to pull back near enough to, to an F sharp. So it's just a way, I'll, you know, yeah. how, that's, that's the amount of pullback I would want on there. But what I'm trying to say is if you put a set of tens on here, you've got two counteracting forces here. So you've got the strings going one way and then you've got these springs in the back of the guitar which pull, which stabilise the tremolo in yeah. that sort of position. Now a lot of guys, if you say John Mayer or someone, you know, like that, they like to deck their trems. So a decked trem means that you can't pull back on the bar. If you look here, you'll see it's dead flat to the body like that. You can only dip down on the bar, and when you release it back, it'll go there. And it's basically by tightening up these two screws in the back or adding more springs yeah. to it. So this is floating. Mm -hmm. um, it's suspended like that. Like I said, I would let it pull back to a to a to, a, to an F sharp or or a G, depending on how much angle. But if I go sure. up to a set of tens, the angle of this, and a lot, we have a lot of customers that will come into the store and go, oh, I've, I've restrung my guitar, but it's broken. My bridge is up in, like, you know, if you look here, it's yeah, up yeah. in the air like that. What have I done to it? And it, it's like, you haven't, you haven't broken it. It's fine. It's just, you've gone up to a heavier set of strings and it's gone to there. So what I'm going to go through with you quickly is just how to, um, how to, how to make um, that adjustment to on the guitar. Yep. So if we look in the back of the guitar here, I'll just turn it over. You've got this plate on the back here. Six screws inside, if you can see that well enough. These want to come off. I mean, personally, on my own strats, I actually leave this, leave this plate off of the I guitar. Do the exact same thing. Uh, just because I'm adjusting it all the time. Um, but it does keep it tidy by having it on there. But you don't, don't worry, you're not going to get electrocuted by having it off. Or OK, so we can see in the back of this guitar, we've got three springs here counteracting the tension. Yep. from the strings on the front. So if I was going to go up to a set of tens, I would restring it, and then these two screws here, if you can see that, these are the ones that you're going to want to tighten mm -hmm. to bring that back to, to, the, to the height that it should be at on the, on the trim system. So yeah. set of tens, I would go, you know, use the right size screwdriver, one of these is great, or just flick it around, you know, it will 
transforming screwdriver. This saved my bacon enough times. Shout out to Dunlop. Shout out to Dunlop, yeah. Performance is everything. Yeah. <laughs> and then uh, basically just, just turn these screws in clockwise or anti-clockwise. And if you try and do even turns on either side, it doesn't have to be super precise. You've got these three springs in there. So yeah, if yeah. you put a set of tens on and then the bridge starts doing this up in the air, slacken the strings off, then tighten up both of these screws, you know, do two, two three turns on each, retune, yep. check and adjust until you've got it at a height that you're comfortable with. Now, bearing in mind, this will affect your whole setup. Yeah. So I would go truss rod, tune in, set that, yep. and then I would do my string height and my intonation. So quick question for you. Yeah. Does the, on the back with the, yep. with the springs, does the, um, the layout of the springs affect anything and does the layout of the claw affect that much? Uh, we're getting into really, everyone thinks a lot of different things on sure. there. Personally, this is how Fender send them out uh, and so do a lot of other manufacturers. If you've got like an EVH guitar, they only have two springs in there, yeah. but they're at super high tension. The way I like to set mine, it's, it's slightly different to this, I like to set mine one going across here so that yeah. they're straight. Set, I use tens, mm -hmm. and then uh, I, I generally have this part of the the claw sitting in slightly further to yeah. the body, so I almost put it at an angle like like that. Yeah. Um, but there's no right or wrong as long as you've got that tension on there. You know, get creative. You know, you can have two on one side, one on the other. Yeah, it's I mean, uh, you can trawl around on forums forever. Yeah, and there's a lot of different way of doing it. You know, you can get different springs as well with different tensions in there, yep. and you know, you can get really into this stuff. But just just yeah. for the sake of just getting this sure. done, one, two, three, or one, two, three. If you're using a set of elevens, I would go two and two and leave the mid middle empty. Yep. If I was using a set of 13s, I would put the full five yeah, springs yeah, you in. You need there. all the springs. You yeah. need all the springs, yeah. Cool. So hopefully you get an idea there of how you can set up your own guitars at home. There's obviously quite a lot of information there. Um, we obviously strongly urge you to read the manual. and uh, Always read the manual. And uh, go online for additional support if you need it. Uh, or give us a call and we'll sort out your guitars for you. If you've enjoyed the video, please leave us a like. Subscribe to see more things like this. So for instance, we've worked on uh, maintaining your neck and your finish and restringing and a bunch of things to look out for there. So keep an eye out for those and uh, we'll see you in the future. Thank you.